Hi, you're here with Tristan, field application engineer at New Tech. Today we're going to have a whiteboard video entitled QAM for Quadrature Amplitude Modulation. QAM is a broadly used modulation scheme in today's modern wireless telecom. We're going to see how it works and how you can implement it on New Tech's software defined radio platforms. I'd like to start by plotting a scatter plot or a constellation plot for QAM on the whiteboard. So here's my I and Q complex axis, and in like any digital transmission, what we're trying to achieve is to transmit a series of bits between a transceiver and a radio receiver. So if I create myself a random string of bits, and we look at the most basic implementation of QAM, which is QAM4, or also referred to as QPSK for quadrature phase shift keying. Uh, in QAM4, what we do is we group the bits in words uh, of two bits. And to each of these two bits words, we want to associate an analog signal, which can be transmitted between the radio transmitter and the receiver, and so that we can transmit the bit string. And so if I create myself an analog signal of a known amplitude and a known phase. And since we want uh, two bits words to be encoded with analog signals, so two to the power of two equals four, I need four different analog signals to encode two bits words. And so I'm gonna make the phase vary here and create four different analog signals and each of those signals is gonna represent a certain two-bit word such as this one could be zero, zero, this one could be zero, one, 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 and one, zero. Well, two bits are not a lot, so what could I do to um, have three bits words instead of only two bits words? And so what I can do is instead of having only one analog signal per quadrant, I can maybe have four different analog signals per quadrant, rising the total numbers of possibilities to 16. So that we would call QAM 16. So in QAM 16, the 16 different analog signals are created by playing on the amplitudes and amplitude and or the phase uh, of the signal. And as expected uh, in any real world application, uh, radio transmission will suffer from nonlinearities uh, and noise. And so the received signal is never exactly the same as the one we have transmitted. So in this case. If I want to uh, transfer this uh, four-bit word uh, corresponding to this analog signal, probably this is not exactly what I'm going to receive at the receiver level. I'm probably, probably going to receive something like this, or like this, or like this, or like this. But I do know that it, it belongs to, to this point, although there is a certain scattering that I'm going to observe around this point. Now, when I'm dealing with high quality RF transceivers and receivers, I'm expecting this, uh, the standard deviation of this uh, scattering uh, to be small and all the points to be uh, pretty much uh, well overlaid. But when I'm dealing with a lower quality RF transceiver and noisier transmission channel, then the standard deviation of the scattering uh, spreads. And so since we uh, mainly use uh, white no noise or Gaussian noise to uh, emulate or model transmission channels. It's, it's really common to say that this spread around each point will have a Gaussian, Gaussian distribution. And so 
obviously at the receiver level, there is a decision that needs to be made when we, we receive a new analog signal. And that decision is, where does it belong? For instance, when I receive something here, uh, I need to take the, the, the decision that this receive signals belong to here. And so that we call a good decision, but sometimes the scattering is, uh, is spread too much. The standard deviation of the scattering is spread too much, and I will transmit this signal, but I will receive it here and make a bad decision at the reception level uh, by saying that this, uh, this uh, analog signal belong here. And so from there emerges the concept of bit error rate. How often do we make good decisions versus how often do we make bad decisions? And uh, as you expect, as the number of qualms goes up uh, from qualm 8 to qualm 16 to qualm 32 to qualm uh, 64, uh, there are many, many, many possibilities of analog signals in each quadrant. So the square for hard decision becomes narrower and if the transmitter or receiver is noisy or if the channel, uh, the transmi transmission channel is noisy, often we will make bad, bad decision uh, in the process of ident identifying to which word corresponds a certain analog signal. So that brings us to another kind of plot that it is really common to see for qualm modulation. And uh, for this plot, we put on the horizontal axis the single to noise ratio of the radio transmitter and receiver along with the transmission channel. Uh, it's referred to as EB over N0, and it's measured in dBs. So for instance, 6 dBs, 12 dBs, 18 dBs, 24 dBs. And on the vertical axis, we put the actual bit error rate. That is how often we do good decisions at reception versus bad decisions at, at reception. So that would be 10 to the 0, 10 to the minus 1, 10 to the minus 2, 10 to the minus 3. And if we plot the relationship for QAM4, for instance, we notice that the higher the signal to noise ratio, the less errors we will we will do on bits transmission. And so what I like to do is I like to plot this relationship for QAM4, but for QAM8 and QAM16 as well. And that helps us to visualize that when I go from QAM4, so 2 bits words, to QAM8, so 3 bits words, in fact, for a given, for a given bit error rate, I actually need a much bigger signal to noise ratio for QAM8 when compared to QAM4. And so if I want to increase my data rate again and move on from uh, 3 bits words to 4 bits words, I need to increase my signal to noise ratio even more. And so RF transmitters and receivers along with uh, transmission channels that have I signal to noise ratio are well suited for high data rate transmission since uh, we can use them to move on from QAM4 to QAM8 to QAM16, maybe to QAM32. And so what we have done here internally at NewTek is we have asked ourselves, 
using new tech software defined radio platforms. How far can we push it? How high in Qualm will we be able to go? And in, in fact, we found that we, that we were able to go up to Qualm 64. That means uh, six bits words. And so the scatter plot or the constellation plot that you see on the screen here is um, the spread at the reception level for our OFDM QAM64 reference design that we provide part of our model-based design uh, software kit for our SDR platforms. And so that is a good proof that uh, within our platforms, we master well um, IQ balancing linearities of transmitter and receivers amplifiers, as well as high uh, signal to noise ratio. So this was Tristan, field application engineer at NewTag. Hope this was insightful, and thanks for listening.